Welcome to uh, the Reapportionment and Redistricting Committee meeting. Um, we'll start off with uh, Representative Jackson, uh, lead us in prayer. In which 17? Heaven, shall we pray? Heavenly Father, as we come before you, we thank you for your dear son, Jesus. We thank you for this opportunity to come together to do the business of the house, Lord, the people's business, Father. And we ask for your direction, your guidance, and your wisdom. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, mainly what we're doing today is just to introduce some of the uh, folks in the reapportionment office uh, to our committee and to the public that may be watching this and to the, and to the folks here who, who came in person. Um, I think that covered everybody, didn't it? And... Um, First of all, I'd like to introduce uh, Jimmy McDonald. Uh, I've known him for a while since I've been in the legislature. He was uh, working with the Judiciary Committee. Don't hold that against him, but he worked with the Judiciary Committee for a while on the eminent domain bill and got to know him about five or six years ago. Uh, Jimmy is a uh, graduate of Georgia State University with a Juris Doctor degree uh, and a Master of Public Administration from See, University of Georgia, go dogs. A good day today, wasn't it, at <laughs> the Capitol? Um, and he's been in, been around the legislature since 1988. He started as an intern back in 98. 88, 88 wasn't that long ago. <laughs> 1998, uh, that makes 11 years or so. And and served five years legislative council in the legislative council office working with uh, economic development, children, and youth. Um, he's from Hinesville, which is, don't hold hat against him. He's from the coast where I'm from. So, But um, he, he learned a lot at Georgia that I didn't learn at Georgia State, maybe. But appreciate you, appreciate you being here and, and introduce yourself and kind of tell us what's going on over there and then introduce your um, members of, of your staff. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just would like to say to start with how happy I am to be taking on this new opportunity and looking forward to work with all this committee and all the members as we move forward what I have with uh, what I have no doubt is a very challenging but I think it's going to be a fun process if I can take a second I'd like to introduce our my staff here uh, I'd like to start over here on the far end with uh, Shantae L and um, some of you might know Shantae uh, but Shantae's new role with our office is going to be she's going to be the director of local districting so we what we've done to kind of just give you a brief synopsis of we've separated the entire process between the legislative and congressional districting process and the local Shantae will be heading up the local and, will, and anything that your local jurisdictions might need, please you know, bring her to her attention. Uh, next to her, we have Gina Wright, and she is our reapportionment services specialist. Um, she will really be one of the very point people on a lot of the actual drawing that we'll be doing with the legislative and um, congressional maps. Next to her, we have probably the backbone of our office, Ms. Tanya Cooper. She's uh, basically our, our office manager, administrative assistant, and anything else that you can imagine that keeps the office running. Um, and then next to her we have Kay, who is going to be one of our map specialists as well as serving in uh, a quasi-in-house counsel um, capacity uh, as he's just graduated from Georgia State Law School. Um, so this is the staff. We're going to be at your disposal for anything that you all might need, please. Um, if I can just take a brief second, I'll let you know exactly what we've been doing up to this point. Okay. Uh, for the last few weeks, the overwhelming majority of the time has been spent on the actual transition getting out of the purview of UGA and into the Legislative Services Committee as a Legislative Services Office, which has mean basically transitioning our IT stuff and procedures and letterhead and things like that. Um, we've been working on getting uh, off, uh, like basically our actual procedures approved, which I hope to have to you in individual correspondence to all the members by the end of the week, which will describe the actual procedures with our office, both for both the local districting and um, the, the legislative districting. So that would be, a, I guess, the first initial starting point for all of us. Um, other than that, I think we're just moving to, um, to, to hit, we have several projects that we're moving forward with to really be prepared for the data that we hope to receive around April 1st, which will be kind of the, I guess, the, the shotgun start. It's going to be the ready, set, go, and we're going to go, and it's going to probably take off from there. But uh, between now and then, we hope to be kind of really pr fully prepared and functional and ready for y'all by mid-March and in, in, in anticipation of the data in April. So that's kind of where we are as far as the Cliff Notes version. Um, if there's anything, any questions anybody might have, I'd, I'd, I'd be happy to do my best to address them. 
And and you mentioned procedures. Those are procedures that you're implementing uh, for members of the legislature and for the local uh, communities, counties, and cities that are uh, doing redistricting just more to deal just, with your office. Just a kind of a, a macro description of the best way to approach the office, what we're tr hopefully trying to avoid just with what we know we can almost anticipate to be a, bit co a chaotic process is to kind of provide some structure to it. Um, just a brief description. There'll probably be something along the lines of an appointment-based system for the individual members in their districts. Two-hour slots, you call, you meet with us, we'll get the information we need from you, and we'll move forward with follow-up appointments. Um, and, and likewise, with the local ju jurisdictions, kind of probably working through your offices individually to set up delegation appointments with our office, just so that we can kind of control the chaos as much as we possibly can over the next, hopefully, not more than a year, but we'll see. Okay. And will the local redistricting be available at the same time that we're doing state and congressional? That is something probably that is still to be determined and outside my purview. Uh, okay. I think we're, as far as what and how those things are going to be addressed is probably still being determined at a pay grade that's much higher than what I am. So, um, <laughs> uh, you know, as soon as I know exactly the details of when and how those things will be determined, I'll, I'll, I'll be happy to forward it to, to all, all the members. Okay. Anybody on the committee have any questions or comments? Chairman Smith. Thank you, and it was very nice to meet the staff today. Most of y'all are familiar faces, and um, I'm sure we'll all be on a first name basis. By the time <laughs> but um, I would love a copy of the staff, the people on the staff, okay. and, and to, um, to reach y'all or just for my knowledge. That's a good, good suggestion. Madam Chair, that's a great idea, and I'll make sure that that's included in the correspondence that we're about to send out to you here this week. Okay. Anybody else? Thank you very much, Thank Mr. McDonald, for being here. Working with you all. We look forward to working with you and your staff, and we've had some experience with you for four or five years now, and I know you got some good good folks there, and uh, you'll be ready for the challenge when the data comes in, I know. And we'll try not to have too much chaos from our side. Um, but I know it will be chaotic. Um, the, the next item on our agenda, uh, we're, we're contemplating having public hearings around the state to get input from citizens as to um, what their desires are for redistricting uh, the state house and senate and congressional districts. Uh, Representative Doug McKillop has been working on putting that together and I've asked him to kind of uh, lead, lead us on that a little bit and tell us what's what's been going on there and, and um, so I'll turn it over to him right now to talk about just concept of what we're kind of looking at. Representative McKillop. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, let's see, in, in deciding how we're going to go forward, we're in a planning stage, sort of pre-launch on reapportionment. Uh, we don't have the local numbers yet. We can't go down to the district level or the precinct level until we get those numbers. But we can, as we say, when we have that shotgun start, uh, have, have everything ready to go. And so what we're looking at is... Um, uh, ten years ago and twenty years ago, there were public he hearings held around the state. I think ten years ago they had seven or eight mm -hmm. public hearings. And so that's the first thing that I think we're going to put in the breast of the committee is how many hearings do we want to have and where are those hearings going to be held? Mm -hmm. And in our continuing effort to make this process one in which we make sure all the members uh, in the House of Representatives are included uh, and we go forward in a cooperative vein, uh, I put on everyone's desk this morning a, a worksheet, for lack of a better word, just saying, you know, we're getting ready to have hearings or we're going, getting ready to schedule hearings. Um, please, everyone, let me know either, let us know either where, what cities you would like to have those hearings in or what criteria you would like the committee to consider as we make those site selections. And obviously, uh, things like geographical uh, dis uh, disperse hearing sites, uh, population sites, places that are easy to get to, venues that are easy to use. Uh, all of those things are going to be considered as we go forward, and we will be, I think, taking up the issue of the number of hearings and where those hearings will be held in a meeting very soon. Um, but I did go ahead and put those worksheets out so each member would have one. They could submit uh, their individual ideas uh, to us rather than having to try and schedule to come to the committee and, and make that to us verbally. And that is something that we'll be uh, taking and compiling and presenting back to the committee when we have that discussion. But uh, it's gone very well and we got a good response already today. And I encourage all the members, the ones here and everyone else, to go ahead and turn those forms back in. Okay. And 
one question came up. The information that's in each member's folder was uh, about the meetings. Was the meetings for 2001? Those are not suggestions for this for this go round. Uh, I, I mentioned someone we were looking at a specific site, and it wasn't on that list. And they, <laughs> the, the member said, uh, well, "It's not on the list." Well, that's, that's ten years ago, so we're going to make a new one. And appreciate Doug working on that and. Uh, and we'll, we'll get that together as soon as we can. Of course, it'll be a joint meeting, so we have to coordinate it with the Senate, with the Senate uh, Reapportionment Committee, and get agreement between the two of us as to where to have those public hearings and uh, those kind of things. So, number 28, who's down there? Sisty, Representative? Yeah. Towton. Towton, okay, way down there. <laughs> have I got you? No, that that's the purpose of what what Doug's working on is determining how to get how to cover the state as efficiently as we can with as few meetings as we can, but but it, but at least give access to most of the uh, areas of the state so they can have input into what they want us to do in their areas when we go there. It, it hadn't been decided. We've, we're trying to narrow it down as much as we can, but once we get all this input, uh, Representative McKillop gets the input on wh where everybody wants to go, then we'll narrow it down as much as we can. Because we, uh, we are short on money, so we don't want to have any more hearings than we have to. But, but it's important that, that the citizens of Georgia have input into our process, and that we, we have the benefit of of their thinking on on what we should be doing and how we should be drawing these districts and everything, so we're probably going to have the public hearings and probably have more than more than what's on that list would be my just my guess, but that's to be determined. We appreciate your question. Anybody else? Is that it? Anybody else got anything for us? Afraid to ask that question. <laughs> well, that we we will adjourn then. <laughs>